What is up you guys? I'm Sarah Sutton, indie author of my young adult friends, to lovers, romance, what are friends for, as well as my upcoming fake relationship romance, Out of My League. You can find the links to both those books in the description box below. Welcome back to my channel. So I tried to leave this one in the house. She didn't like that. If you've seen my vlogs, you'll see how far my office is from my house and I could hear her barking from out here. I don't know how this is gonna go, <laughs> if she's gonna hop down or she's just gonna lay down, so we'll see how it goes. She is spoiled, it's fine. That's today is the promised Q&A video. I hinted at it in the vlog that came out on Monday and then that vlog ended up being way too long so I am recording it now as a bonus video for the week. Hello! I didn't want to not record it because I'd already asked you guys to ask me questions and I got a lot of questions so we will hop into those. These are going to be self-publishing related and I think a few of them are actually personal so I don't know how these are going to pop up on screen if they're going to be like like a text box you know like boop you know all that fun stuff. Um, I'm not I'm not sure if my editing skills are that advanced just yet. Editing Sarah, what do you think? Awesome. We'll just see how it goes. If you want to, all of my social media accounts are at Sarah May Sutton. Ask me questions. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Sarah May Sutton. Okay, so I don't know if I was in focus the entire time, but you know what? I'm not gonna re-record it because I actually don't know how long I filmed for. Okay, let's hop over to Twitter. Where is my ask me anything? Oh, right here. So there are five questions from Twitter. Okay, so Quinn Buckland asked, how many stories slash projects do you work on at a time? This includes editing, outlining, and writing. I really, I used to work on multiple projects at the same time, but right as of right now, I only work on one project. Yeah, only one at a time, technically. So what I do is, so for example, I just finished my edits for If The Room Fits, right? While that's off with my critique partners, I'm working on something else. So I don't know if that's technically working on two projects at once. It's the one project I'm not technically working on actively, but I only write and edit one project at a time. DC Write Hammer asks, how are you balancing writing and YouTubing? I wasn't writing much anyway in the last couple of years. I'm having fun making videos. I'm going with it. It's actually been really fun. I always wanted to start a YouTube channel. Starting in January, I started doing live streams on my Instagram account, and those live streams really helped me be more comfortable in front of a camera and in front of an audience in a way. I will record a few videos throughout the week. That takes about an hour to record a video, I would say, since I record kind of shorter videos. So it takes me about an hour. Maybe I'll make two videos a week, so that's two hours a week. That's not a lot of time at all. And my vlogs, yes, my vlogs are periodically throughout the day, but honestly the vlogs actually keep me motivated to write because I'm checking in with you every day. And so it's like having an accountability partner. <laughs> like you're keeping me accountable to write because you want that content and I want to give you that content and you want to see my journey and my writing style and all that stuff. It's it's really an easy balance for me as to how I'm doing it. I think you gotta really decide how much time you want to put into both and then kind of stick to that. Um, somebody asked, what are the pros and cons of self-publishing? And if you did not know this, last Friday I posted a video on that very topic. I will link it in the cards up here. I think it's in this corner, but I'll link it in the cards and I'll link it down below as well. So if you really want to see the pros and cons of self-publishing, click that link and watch that video. But keep in mind, these are my pros and cons. So everyone can have a different opinion. Totally fine. How much time do you spend in the pre-writing stage with character profiles and scenes plot points or are you pantser and just jump in? So I kind of, I'm not technically a pantser. I don't call my, I, don't, I wouldn't call myself a pantser, but I'm not much of a plotter. I think it's because I keep all that information in my head and so I don't write it down. I don't plot it down, but I know it going into the book anyway. I guess I'm kind of a planner because I'm planning on what I want to write, but I don't always write it down. And if you know me, I've talked about this a little bit before. I get bored of outlining and planning. I didn't outline my other book and I totally should. Katie, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I should have planned that one, but I just, it's really hard for me to get myself to sit down and plan when I just want to write. And that comes to Cassie's question, are you a plotter or a pantser? And I would say a little bit of both. Okay, that is all the questions from Twitter. So now let's hop over to Instagram. Instagram has more of the personal questions and actually has more questions in general. So Sarah asked me, how did I find my editor? So I used two editors 
for both my books. I used one editor for Out of My League and one editor for What Are Friends For. I found the editor for What Are Friends For through Readsy. Um, that's a good spot if you want to find professional editors, cover designers, a bunch of kind of, a bunch of people. I, I don't really know what else they do, but you know, they do a lot of stuff. For Out of My League, I think I posted on Twitter asking if anybody knew copy editors that they loved. I don't remember if this person suggested themselves or somebody else suggested this person, but I found this person and I used her and she was amazing. What is one piece of advice you'd give someone before they publish their book? Remember why you wrote that book. There's going to be people who love it. There's going to be people who hate it. There's going to be people who don't really care about it. So what's really important to remember is why you wrote that book in the first place. Why did you pen that story? Why did you pick those characters? Why did you pursue that plot? It's really important to keep that in mind in the midst of praise and criticism. Pixie asked me, do you have a go-to snack? I don't know if it's technically a snack, but something that I always find myself reaching for are those Dove caramel chocolates. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I guess a go-to snack would be those Dove caramels or just chocolate in general, to be honest. What book would you love to see turned into a movie? You know what I think would be a great book that would be turned into a movie? If you've read the Selection series, I think that would be perfect and I think I heard someone say that they're coming out with a Netflix series for that movie, for that series and if they are, I'm all over it. <laughs> what distracts you most from writing? Uh, social media for sure. Because there's always that like, I get that FOMO when I'm not on social media. It's like, oh, did someone comment? Did someone post something that I could comment on? What'd someone else say? I don't know. It's just like that irrational kind of feeling. Like, Sarah, take a chill pill. It's fine. You gotta get work done. You can't be on social media all the time. You can't be talking to people all the time. Do do you have a favorite part from What Are Friends For? I do. I mean, of course I do, right? Well, okay, mm, I have two. If you know what happens between chapter four and chapter five, I am obsessed with the very end of chapter four and then the entirety of chapter five. That last line in chapter four, you guys, every time I read it, I feel like my jaw drops, which is kind of stupid that my jaw drops over my own book. Okay, that's not, that's part number one that I can't really tell you about because it spoils things. Well, it you just read it and find out. But part number two that I really love, and every time I read it, I laugh, is a part where Remy is staring at Elijah and she's like admiring Elijah, like, oh, his eyes are so pretty and his lips are so lippy and then suddenly Elijah looks over at her while she's in fantasy land no one says anything and she's still wrapped up in and they're staring at each other and all of a sudden what happens does, does Elijah smile yeah Elijah smiles and he's like haha you blinked I win and the entire time that Remy was staring at him like longingly he thought they were playing a staring contest and I every single time I die I think that is that's like the epitome of Remy and Elijah in that book. <laughs> what is your editing routine? Answer this question in a bit of detail. What I do, so I write the first draft, right? I let it sit and then I go back and I edit it from beginning to end, kind of with making sure everything that's a loose thread is tied up. And then I'll go back through it one more time, look at it again, make sure the lines, the sentences are spoken the way I want them to. And then I will send it to my critique partners. Once I get their comments, I incorporate them if I agree with them. Then I go through the whole line again. So I tie up any loose ends. I add some filler details where the filler details are needed. And then from there, I send it to beta readers. That's a whole other process that I can go into in a different video because it's going to be its own video. It's really long and detailed. Do you guys want to see a beta reading video? If you do, please let me know. After I get the beta reads back, I'll incorporate those beta reads. You know, we'll do it again. Loose ends, sentence structure is good. Then I'll send it to a copy editor and we do all that over again. Then it's basically done for proofreading. That's basically what my process is over and over and over again until it's done. <laughs> that is a spam comment. What inspires you? A lot of things inspire me. Music is a huge one for me. I actually cannot write if I don't have music playing. TV shows, movies, reading is such a great source of inspiration, but lately I've been loving watching music videos. I never used to watch music videos, but if I hear a song that I like, I'll look up the video and listen to it and watch it and usually that really sparks my creativity as well. Have you ever purchased an artwork? The fun thing is you guys, I just did. So I did actually just purchase an artwork. If you know the illustrator Catnip Illustrations, I actually purchased a commission with her and I asked 
her to draw Remy, Elijah, Sophia, and Walsh, and Sophia and Walsh are in Out of My League. I asked her to draw them and it turned out so beautiful. On the day that I'm recording this, I actually got the finished product today. I don't know when I'm gonna share it, I don't know if I'm gonna share it, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna print out the artwork and then I'm going to make 10 copies of that, order 10 copies of Out of My League, and do 10 paperback pre-orders of Out of My League. So you'll get a signed paperback copy, photo of the characters, a bookmark of Out of My League, and what are friends for, as well as a few other goodies that I'll find, baseball related, book related, and that kind of stuff. If you are interested in a paperback pre-order, please let me know, leave a comment down below, and I also know that some of you may have already pre-ordered the Out of My League paperback already, and if you have, just shoot me a message, so just let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Would you be interested in a signed paperback copy? Leave a comment. You're gonna be leaving so many comments by the time this video is over. I feel like I've said that a ton today. Leave a comment, leave a comment, leave a comment, leave a comment. If you didn't know, comments help small YouTubers like me help grow out if you want to. I'm not pressuring you to leave a comment. I feel like that's like a check mark we have to do. Comments help small YouTubers. Check. I, but I really do appreciate it. If you do leave a comment, I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day and helping me out. It really, really means a lot to me. All right, what writing resources do you recommend? So I recently did a video, actually now it's probably not so recent. It was called Crafting Characters and I talked about four books in that series. I'm not gonna tell you what they are. You have to go watch the video to find out what those books were. I'll leave the info in the cards, but <laughs> Those are the ride or die writing resources that I recommend, as well as Save the Cat Writes a Novel, which I don't talk about in that video, but that's still another ride or die. Okay, and the last question is how do you make money on your books? It's kind of a big question with a tiny answer, but I just promote them. So I promote them with various methods, and I want to make a video on how I promote my books in the future. So if that's something you're interested in, leave a comment down below. I do want to make a video on that in the future, all about my marketing resources, my paid and unpaid marketing resources, what I do to sell my books. But really, all you gotta do is just talk about it. If you talk about your books, that will help people remember your books, remember you, and eventually will lead to a sale. I talk about them nonstop. Not so much out of my league right now. In the month of May, you're gonna see me pick up talking about out of my league like crazy because that's kind of when my marketing for it is going to go live. I know I launched the book cover in April, but that's really what, that was really to just generate some pre-buzz and then in May is when the buzz is going to be buzzing. If you didn't know, Out of My League is my young adult fake relationship romance book. It debuts June 16th. It features Sophia and Walsh. Um, like I said, Sophia is a high school journalist and she is doing an undercover expose on the baseball team while fake dating the baseball team captain. Those are all the questions that I have for today's Q&A. I had so much fun filming this and answering your guys' questions. If you want me to do another one of these soon, let me know and ask me more questions because I need more questions to answer to do another video. But yes, so on Friday, another video is going to be coming at you. It's going to be a 10 things that I learned between What Are Friends For and Out of My League. And you're gonna want to watch that video because I learned a lot of good stuff. <laughs> a lot of good stuff. So yes, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please like, leave a comment, and subscribe. And for today's question of the day, do you have any pets? I have two dogs. I have Maya, who needs a haircut, but all the groomers are closed. I also have another dog named Giselle. So leave a comment down below if you have any pets and what are their names. We would love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you on Friday with another video. Bye. Bye. We did it, babes. We did it. We filmed that video, and you only barked once. You were only sad once. Yeah. You're such a big girl. It shouldn't be snowing in April, what the heck. No, thank you. No. No. Are you done? Every time she sees the posters over there, right there, she barks because they look like people. And she does not like it.